Hey everybody, and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this video, we're going to add a UI date picker to a text field. This will allow the user to enter a date easily without having them to enter it in manually and potentially make a mistake. All they'll have to do is tap on the text field and the date picker will appear. We'll also talk about the date formatter, which creates a date string in whatever format you want from the actual larger date object. From just displaying the word Thursday or some localized version of that, to the year, month, day, time, it's fully customizable. So let's get started. In the project that we have here, I have set up a text field that we're going to have the user tap into, and then we're going to display the date picker when that user taps in there. So I've already set up a reference to that called date text field. And so on the date text field here, we would want to set the input view to a UI date picker. So let's set that up first. We're going to put this as a member so we can reuse it. So let date picker, and that's going to be of UI date picker type. And we can instantiate that here if we want to, or we could do it in the view did load. So once we have that instantiated, we can go to the date text field and set the input view to the date picker. All right, but we're not done. The date picker needs to be set up first, so let's go ahead and do that. So date picker, what we can do initially is we can set the date that we want it to display. So that's as easy as set date, and you can pass in any date that you've created yourself, say a week in advance, a day in advance, or sometime in the past, whatever you need. But for this, we're going to just put in the date for right now. So we just run the constructor and it'll pass back a date of right now. Do we want that animated? In the date picker, what it'll do is it will cycle through the dates until it gets to that date. We don't really need this at this moment because this will be set before we even display the date picker. So we're gonna set that to false, but if you wanted it to be animated, go for it. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the date picker's format. So what is the mode that it's going to show you just type in mode and we can set the date picker mode. So if you just want somebody to select a time, you can say set or a dot and it'll bring up all of the UI date picker mode constants. And the dot in the beginning is shorthand. Instead of typing out UI date picker dot mode dot whatever, you just type in dot because the compiler knows what types are supposed to be assigned to that because you can only assign one type to that date picker mode. All right, so if you want a countdown time timer, you can go with this one, date, date and time, and just regular time. So let's go with date and time. I can show you how to select all of these. You can imagine what the other ones look like. All right, great. And we would almost be done, but when a user selects a date, we don't know what date they selected. So on the date picker, we can set a target, and the target will be a callback or a method that we're going to call uh, when the date picker selects its date. So user selects the date, we get that notification and we can act on it. So I'm gonna add target. All right, and the target's going to be self. Let me uh, move this up a little bit. So it's gonna call back on this particular view controller that we're in. Right now we're just in the default view controller that comes with the project that we built. So just this guy over here on the left, uh, this is the code on the right for it. So we're gonna call on our self and the action, we'll get to that in a second. And then what control event do we want to have it being fired upon? So if we hit dot, we have all these different events that we can have this method be fired when these things happen. So we really just care about when the value of the date picker has changed. So select that one, hit enter, and we have this one. All right, so for our action, we need to define that function first. And so you can type in function and you can just say date picker changed something like that and it's going to pass in the actual date picker itself so you can manipulate it if you want to maybe if they're selecting something too far in the in the future or in the past or what have you you can actually animate that back and force them to select a proper date or you can do something else and you would need a reference to that now this is not strictly necessary but we can just pass it in and we can get it if we need it. So the date picker, and this is gonna be of type UI uh, date picker. 
All right, perfect. Let me go ahead and close this so we get a little bit more room on our code. All right, so in our function here, we have the date picker and we do actually need it now that I think about it because we need to get the date out of it. Um, I do have a reference to it so I can get it from there, but uh, we're just gonna say the selected date and that's going to equal the date picker dot date. Okay, there we go. So now that we have the date, we can act upon that. So let us just go ahead and use the reference that we have to our date text field and set its text to the date that we just pulled out of the date picker. And again, this, this function will only get called when somebody scrolls up to the date picker and stops on a particular date. So we're gonna, when that happens, the date picker will come up on the bottom side here and this text field here will update with whatever they have selected. All right, so we're just going to do the uh, selected date here, as I mentioned, if I can spell it out here, selected date. But you can see a problem right away. We can't assign a date to the text. And so what do we do here? Uh, well, you can try to do something like to string, but date doesn't have a to string method on it. Instead, what I like to do just for debugging purposes is do the description of it. And the description, as you can see, is kind of a, um, it's, it's very similar to the debug description, but you can override these in your own classes. If you want to display the classes in either a print statement or put in a text field, you can override this method. So we're just going to use this and see what pops up. It's going to be, the format for this is going to be a little uh, crazy looking, but we'll try it see what goes on here. So now that we have this function defined for this selector, we can go ahead and assign the selector here. But what we also have to do is we have to add in what's called a um, decoration attribute. And we're going to decorate this method with this attribute of the objective C or OBJ C keyword here. This is kind of a under the hood compiler helper where we're just saying that we're exposing this Swift method to the Objective-C runtime so that we can do a selector on it. So once we have these two things defined, namely the OBGC or Objective-C decorator and the method decoration, we can go up to our selector and we can do pound selector. Okay, and that'll give us the keyword selector. And then as you can see, it's expecting to pass into this method a OBG, OBJ-C method. So hit enter to complete that for us and just start typing it out. So date picker selected or changed here and select that and it'll do the, the signature for us automatically. And that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and build that. All right, so our application came up here and as you can see, we have our date. We're gonna select the text field and we have a date picker that pops up here. All right, so we have today, we can scroll up through the different months. And as I'm scrolling through and stopping on a particular day, we get that updated. Okay, so as you can see, it changes as we select it, even from AM to PM. It is in the 24 hour clock, however. And so you probably don't wanna display this to the user because that's not very friendly. So let's go ahead and fix this. But again, it is just a quick debug way to see if our application is working. Let me go ahead and change this label real quick. Let's just say date of event or something like that. All right, cool. So what we wanna do is on this selected date object, we wanna format the date in order to display a more well formatted date here. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a date formatter. So let date formatter equal a new date formatter. If you wanna reuse this date formatter throughout your application, feel free to either make it a member of this class or more appropriately, probably put it into its own kind of a utility class for formatting dates, depending upon how your application formats dates, because then you can make date formatting consistent throughout your application. So once we have that, we're going to select the date formatter. And then on that, we can select the date style. So go down to date style. It's going to ask 
for a date formatter dot style as you can see here date formatter dot style hit enter on that and what you can do is just hit dot and then see all the options that we have available for that style so we have the full style a long style a medium style no style or a very short style so let's go for the um, full style first we'll see what that looks like but before we compile and look at what we've done we haven't actually done anything with this formatter so we have to create a string from the formatter using the formatter I should say so I'm gonna say formatted date string because it is of type string and we're gonna use that date formatter so date formatter dot string and then just pass in the date of whatever it is you want to format so on this one it's just gonna be the selected day pass it in here so again we create a date formatter we set the format style again this will be fully customizable we'll get to that in a second and then we create a string using that date formatter we're going to use that string to set our text field let's go ahead and run our application okay so here's our application we click into the text field it shows our date picker and as we select these different items you can see this is the full format so Sunday March 3rd okay so let's go ahead and look at some of these other options. Look at short, select our text view, our text field here, select a option, and this is the short format. Now let's say you want the short format, but you also want something like a time or the hour. This will get you about 90% of the way. Those other 10% of the times where you need something a little bit more granular well, we have the ability to set the date format for this. So instead of the date style, I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to, on the date formatter, set the date format. Okay, so as you can see, for the date format, we're expecting a string. And you can always read the documentation to see what these other, what these other methods do. But this one says the date format string used by the receiver. Well, that doesn't really help, but let me explain this to you for you. So the date format, what this will allow you to do is use that format to define exactly where the month and the day and all the other pieces of the date go. So I'll give you an example. If you want the year first, what you can do is you can type in Y, 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 and that will set a four digit or however many digits the year has at the current time. If you're watching this 8,000 years in the future, you might have another placeholder there. So then we can do the day, but maybe we want to do instead of the day, maybe the day of the week. So for that format, and I'll share in the description below a website where you can pick out all these different symbols and what they mean. But for the name of the day, what we do is day, D, 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 D. So to give you the year first, the day, and then we can do, uh, let's say the time. So something like the hour would be space H, H. And then if you want a colon in the middle you can put the colon or you can maybe put a hyphen or whatever symbols you want in here uh, do be careful because some of the symbols do um, have special meanings in the state formatter so if you want to put in a special formatter or a special character you can always use the escape key and there's other methods to to have some pretty pretty fancy looking date strings here all right, so we're just gonna do a space and then we're going to do mm for the minutes and we can do ss for the seconds and fff for the milliseconds. Why do you need milliseconds? I don't know, but you can put it in here or maybe you can put the milliseconds at the beginning and have some kind of coded date formatter. But if you want that, just go ahead with the original description on our date and that's pretty cryptic as it is. Okay, so that's all we have to change for this. Instead of using this date style dot short or wherever we have, we're gonna actually put in our own custom one here. And let me actually put back in that milliseconds just to show you what that looks like. We're gonna compile our application and see. Oh, and it looks like I, I messed up the date format. So let me go ahead and change that. It looks like the year is fine. We messed up the day of the month. So we can just do the, uh, the time and I'll provide the link of where I'm referencing these for Swift down in the description below, as I mentioned. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and clean this up. Maybe we're gonna actually have semicolons here. So this might look something a little bit more what you're used to. It's just a year and then the time for whatever it is you're doing. Okay, so again, it is in the 24 hour clock, but that's the date formatter for you. That's the UI date picker, and it's pretty much that easy.
So I hope you found this video useful. If so, subscribe to see more videos on iOS development, Android development, 3D game development, and more. If you're looking for help on your apps or games, consider becoming a patron and request personalized help, get access to source code, join our developer community, and more. Details are in the description below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.